All right, so let's pick up from where we left off last time. Uh, we, we talked about the elements and the periodic table, and we said uh, we classified the elements based on their locations in their periodic table. And so if this was the last slide we were on, uh, we were talking about the elements that are found in nature as collections of molecules. So we talked about the diatomic molecules. You do need to memorize these, okay? So fluorine, the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, they're found in nature as diatomic molecules. And oxygens, so are oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. And then phosphorus and, sulf and sulfur are found as polyatomic molecules in nature. So phosphorus is P4, sulfur is S8, diamond, uh, it can be thought of as one giant molecule of covalently bonded carbon atoms, and you can have also uh, giant molecules, flat molecules of carbon atoms forming what's a molecule called graphene. That's the layers of these graphene are what's made, what makes graphite. That's the lead in your pencil. And we also mentioned that o oxygen may also be found in nature as triatomic, O3, it's called ozone. Okay, and so here's just a quick summary of the classifications of the elements. Uh, the, if you go to the Los Alamos National Laboratory, go to periodic.lanl. LANL is Los Alamos National Laboratory.gov. They have a periodic table that neatly summarizes the classifications of the elements. Can you see my periodic table? I assume you can. All right, so if you scroll down to the bottom of this periodic table, you have there the, a key that classifies the, per, the elements. So you have here your alkaline, ele, alkali, ele, alkali metals, group 1A, okay? And then you have your group 2A would be your alkaline earth metals. And then here your, your uh, transition metals, shown in green. And you have your post-transition metals. Now, it includes aluminum, although I would not consider aluminum as a post-transition metal because it's number 13. The transitions start at 21. So I would not really consider aluminum as a post-transition metal. Okay. And then after your post-transition metals, you have your uh, metalloids right here. Okay. And then everything after that is non-metals. And so your non-metals, okay, except for down here, by the way, you have your lanthanides and your actinides. These are your inner transitions, inner transition metals. And uh, all the non-metals can be, uh, the non-metals are uh, over here. The hydrogen and all of these other up here. And so among the nonmetals, you can refer to the last group, the last column, as the, the noble gases. Okay, oops. And column 17, or group 7A, is uh, collectively known as the halogens. Okay, so that's a nice summary of all the, the classifications of the elements. Um, let's see. Back to that. Now, uh, we said also, um, actually, this is going to be the next slide. Uh, so, the other nonmetals, the noble gases, group 8A, okay, these are the atoms that tend not to form ions or molecules. So, we said that, remember, we said metals, if you go back to your periodic table, we said that these metals tend to form positive ions. Okay, the nonmetals over here, if they interact with metals, they tend to form negative ions. Okay, and then the, uh, the metalloids and these nonmetals amongst themselves, they tend to just share ions. Okay, so the t general tendency is for um, metals. So if you have a metal combining with nonmetals, so your metals tend to become positive ions and your nonmetals tend to become negative ions. If you have nonmetals amongst themselves or metalloids amongst themselves, they tend to share electrons. Okay, so the attraction between these ions would be called ionic bonding. We talked about that last time. 
and the sharing of the electrons, the attractions that lead to sharing of electrons is what we would call covalent bonding. Okay, so that's all. All the groups, so pretty much address the behavior of all the groups of elements that we have on our periodic table, except for the noble gases. Okay, these noble gases over here, okay, they are also referred to as inert gases because they tend not to interact with other atoms. So they tend not to form ions and they tend not to form uh, covalent bonds, group 8A. Okay, so based on that, which of these elements are you most likely to find in nature as a collection of neutral atoms, a monatomic gas? Is it A, sodium, B, neon, or C, fluorine? Can you just type your answer with a single letter? Or I guess you don't have your clickers with you, huh? Guys? So popular answer is neon. Very good. Neon, if you look at your periodic table, is a noble gas. So you have your neon right there. Okay? So moving on. I think the rest of these are just clicker questions. So let's just go through a few of these. And you'll see a lot of these in your, uh, in your homework on Moodle. So let's just look do a few of these okay our first test um let's see as soon as we finish compounds after this after this next powerpoint so that would be a week after that that would be a good time to take do the first test okay uh which of the following elements is a metal that belongs to a main group or a representative group magnesium so this kind of requires that you know what the symbols are. Zinc, sulfur, or oxygen. Oh, uranium, I'm sorry. Sulfur or uranium. Where's uranium? Somewhere down here. Look for, ur look for uranium. Uranium. Uh, down here under the actinides, number 92. Okay. So, that? which one would you consider a member of a main group or a represent is not a metal that's a member of a main group or a representative group? A, B, C, or D? Just type your answer in. Okay. So, correct answer is magnesium. Okay, so these are your main groups. And these are your metals, right? Uh, these are your metals right here. So the correct answer is A. Let's look at the next question. Which of these is a transition metal? Silicon, lead, sodium, or chromium? Answer. Okay. The correct answer is chromium. Okay, so these are your transition metals right here. Next question, which of these, all of these are true except sodium is an alkali metal, B, neon is a noble gas, C, calcium is an alkaline earth, D, oxygen is a halogen. Which one is not true? Okay, D, 
oxygen is not a halogen. Okay, so that's false. Very good. Let's look at this one. Which of these is the best electrical conductor? Carbon, germanium, manganese, or iodine? What's the answer to this one? Alright, so you all know the answer. Manganese. Metals are good electrical conductors. Germanium is a metalloid. Carbon and iodine are non-metals. Very good. Uh, let's see. Which of the following is a metalloid? Potassium, silicon, iron, or helium? Potassium, silicon, iron, or helium? Which one's a metalloid? Good. Silicon. Okay. Right here is where you find your metalloids. Post-transition metal. Which one is post-transition? Is it silicon, lead, sodium, or chromium? Post-transition. By the way, you should get into the habit of bringing your, a periodic table with you when I'm doing the lectures. That way, you can always have a periodic table to refer to right away. Sometimes, I forget to put a periodic table on a slide that requires one. Okay. Post-transition metal. Okay, so these are the main groups, right? Main group metals, and so are these, okay, and these are your transition metals. Which one is a post-transition metal? Comes after the transition metal. That's not a transition metal. It would be one of these. So the answer is lead. Okay, so your post-transition metals are these right here. Okay, so gallium, indium, tin, thallium, lead, and this one. Which of these is not a gas under ordinary conditions? You kind of have to go back to those classification Bromine, correct? Those are bromine and mercury, if you remember, are the only two elements that are liquids under ordinary conditions. So helium, that's what you use to fill your balloon. Hydrogen is H2, that's the, one of the lightest elements, that's a gas. Oxygen is O2, it's 20% uh, of the molecules in the air you breathe. Okay, so the correct answer is bromine. Uh, let's look at this one. Which of these naturally occurring ions is paired with its correct symbol? Potassium ion is K plus 2 plus. Barium is potassium. Barium is barium with a plus 2. Sulfide is S with a negative 3. Iodine is I with a plus. Which one is paired with its correct symbol? Okay, good. Correct answer is C, barium. So group 1A is plus 1, group 2A is plus 2, group 6A, if you find it as a monatomic ion sulfide, it's going to have a negative 2 charge, and group 7A, iodide is going to have a negative 1 charge. Okay, so potassium ion would be K plus, and sulfide would be S with a negative 2, and iodide is I with a negative 1. How about this one? Which of the following pairs of atoms is most likely to form an ionic bond, to be involved in an ionic bond? Carbon and hydrogen. Calcium and hydrogen. Here's calcium. There's hydrogen right there. 
or a pair of mercury atoms. Okay, very good. Metal plus non-metal is more likely to form an ionic bond. So your calcium will tend to become a plus two and your hydride, hydrogen will become a negative one. Ion, which is called hydride. Okay. Carbon and hydrogen are both non-metal, so they tend to form covalent bonding. And both metals, a pair of metals, will tend to form covalent bonds, unless you have a whole bunch of them, in which case you have what's called an, a metallic bond. Okay. And there's more of that. Let me see if I can... Here's a good question. What type of bond holds together the polyatomic ions, the atoms together, in the polyatomic ions chromate and nitrate? Is it ionic for chromate, ionic for nitrate, or is it ionic for chromate, covalent for nitrate, covalent for chromate, ionic for nitrate, or is it covalent for both? What type of bond holds the atoms together in the polyatomic ion? Very good. You didn't fall for the trick. Okay. Yes. Covalent bonding holds the atoms together in a polyatomic ion. I'm impressed. All right. Uh, which of these occur as a diatomic gas under ordinary conditions. So you need to remember your, your, your diatomics. Is it bromine, iodine, mercury, or chlorine? Okay. Diatomic gas under ordinary conditions. Okay, bromine's a liquid, right? So it's not bromine. It's not mercury. It's not a gas. It's a liquid under ordinary conditions. If you look at your color coding of your periodic table, your gases are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine. And then these are your gases, right? And then if you look at your diatomics, their diatomics are hydrogen, Nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So the one that fits the description, diatomic gas, diatomic and gases under ordinary conditions, is chlorine. Good. And the last one, which of these occurs as a monatomic gas under ordinary conditions? Is it helium? Sodium, oxygen, or nitrogen. That monatomic gas. Okay, good. Helium. Okay, and that's uh, the noble gases. All right, so we're done with the elements. Let me stop the recording and start a new one for the next lecture, which is on compounds.